Elsa stood alongside a few members of her household guard, along with the townsfolk of Arendelle, as they looked out to the sea toward a ship that had been set to arrive from the Southern Isles. As the ship began approaching the port, the people couldn't help but wonder what news might be waiting for them when it arrived. Calm and collected, Elsa thought to herself as she watched the ship drop its sail and begin to come to a slow halt in the water. Stay calm and collected, and this will all be over with. A tall, red-haired man who appeared to be fairly well-dressed was the first to step off the ship, and as soon as his feet touched the dock, he stopped in his tracks and looked to the crowd of people who appeared to be waiting for him. I present the Duke of Wesselton, announced the man as he gestured back toward the ship. Following the announcement, another man emerged from the deck of the ship. The Duke of Wesselton stood up as straight as he could on the swaying ship and awaited a greeting from the crowd, but instead was met with quiet muttering. The Duke did his best to appear unfazed by what he felt was an ungracious welcoming as he simply adjusted his uniform to ensure it was straight and made his way off of the ship and toward Queen Elsa. As he approached the new Lady of Arendelle, the Duke appeared to force a smile. Queen Elsa, how good it is to see you, he said as he bowed his head low. Now, I know we may have gotten off on the wrong... What is the manner of your visit, Duke Wesselton? Elsa quickly cut him off. The Duke wasn't used to being interrupted mid-sentence. He had to take a second to collect his thoughts. But before he could, Elsa began speaking again. I apologize. You must be quite tired after a long trip. May I offer you any accommodations? After all, I think we all want this meeting to go better than the last time we had a visitor. My lady, please allow me to apologize for the way I acted and the way my men acted toward you. You invited our kingdom here for the coronation ceremony. We had not right... Again, the duke was interrupted. Let's speak no more of this. It wasn't you directly who tried to marry my sister, kill me, and take over my kingdom. Elsa quickly interjected. The Duke of Wesselton appeared confused, but quickly shook it off. Your Majesty, please. That's why we are here, he said as he extended his hand toward the Queen of Arendelle. The Duke was holding on to a letter that was stamped with the insignia of the House of Westergaard, the King of the Southern Isles. Elsa looked at the letter before taking it from the Duke. What does King George want with me? she thought to herself as she began to open the letter. An invitation? King George Westergaard would like to formally invite you to the Southern Isles so that he may apologize for the distress his family has caused you and your people. The Duke began to explain. My king would also like for you to see what has become of the man who tried to usurp your throne. Elsa was taken aback by the gesture. She was unsure how to respond. Please, take the night to think on it. We only wish to set things right. Now, you mentioned accommodations? Asked the Duke of Wesselton. That night, in the castle of Arendelle, Elsa broke the news to her sister as she hoped to get her opinion on whether or not to accept the invitation. Are you kidding me? Anna began to yell. Who do they think they are? And who do they think you are? Do they really believe you would just accept their invite, hop on their ship, and act like everything was all hunky-dory? Anna, Elsa began to respond. Anna, relax. It's going to be okay. Anna took a few deep breaths and slowly began to settle down. But really, do they sincerely believe that you would go over there after what happened? Elsa looked at her sister and began to make an uncomfortable-looking smile as she began to explain. I think it might actually be a good idea. Before Anna could respond, Elsa continued, Think about it, Anna. It might be smart to build peace with the Southern Isles again. Anna began to say before Elsa interrupted, We are a port city, Anna. Most of our economy is built on traders, and you know as well as I do that the Southern Isles control the majority of the trade routes. What if it's a trap, Elsa? Anna asked in a worried tone. The King of the Southern Isles has never been one to make apologies or admit he was wrong. Why would he want to do it now? Anna, if this was a trap, 
I don't think the Duke would have announced the King's plan to have me visit in front of everyone at the port. Elsa placed a hand on her sister's shoulder. I'll make sure that everything is fine. I'll take a guard with me, and I will be back in a few short weeks. Anna couldn't help but show concern for her sister. Besides, I don't think King George could handle me if I got serious, Elsa said as she began to make snow from above them with her icy abilities. The two sisters laughed and spent the rest of the night planning for the voyage. The following day, Elsa, along with a single guard, met the Duke of Wesselton by his ship and informed him that Elsa would take the king up on his invitation. And by noon of that day, the ship was setting off from the ports of Arendelle. After having been at sea for nearly three weeks, finally having her eyes on land made Elsa feel happier than she would have expected. Even if that land she was looking at was ruled by the family that tried to have her killed. It's nicer than I expected, she thought to herself as she looked upon the Isle of Leso. Elsa was the first one rushing off of the ship as soon as they reached the port, and she rejoiced to be on solid ground again. She looked around her and began to take in what the Isle of Leso had to offer. All eyes were on her. Many people in the town had heard about the mystical Ice Queen that ruled Arendelle, but none of them knew what to expect from her. Elsa smiled before greeting the people. Hello, I am Queen Elsa from Arendelle. Thank you all for inviting me to your beautiful kingdom. The townspeople around her began to bow, and beyond them, Elsa noticed a horse-drawn carriage that was waiting for her arrival. Your Majesty, this will take us to the castle and to King George, who is waiting to welcome you, the Duke of Wesselton said as he exited the ship behind Elsa. He was gesturing toward the carriage. The pair, along with Elsa's guard, climbed into the carriage and were promptly ushered to the castle. Elsa made sure to greet and wave to every person that she passed by, with the same kindness she showed her own people. After arriving at the large stone castle, Elsa and her guard were escorted inside and to the throne room, and in what felt like no time, she was standing in front of a set of large wooden doors that would lead her into the throne room. The doors opened before her, and with one glance inside, she could see that King George had invited many guests into the castle to meet her. As she looked to the other side of the throne room, she noticed the king sitting beside his queen on their thrones, and to both sides of them were twelve men of various ages. Those must be Hans's brothers, she thought to herself as she made her way into the room. She couldn't help but lock eyes with King George as she grew closer to the throne. It's all right, calm and collected, she thought to herself. Without any warning, the king stood from his throne and quickly walked toward Elsa. The two met toward the middle of the room. Elsa opened her mouth as if she was going to speak, but before she could say anything, King George dropped down to one knee and hung his head so low that his hair was practically grazing the carpeted aisle. Please, Queen Elsa, King George began saying as he tried his best to speak loudly but not sound as if he was yelling in aggression. I, King George Westergaard of the Southern Isles, would ask that you accept my kingdom's humblest of apologies for all of the wrongdoings that you suffered at the hands of my accursed child. He lifted his head to meet Elsa's stare. Rest assured that we have handled the boy in a manner that we believe you will find fits his situation perfectly. The king slowly rose to his feet and grabbed Elsa's hands in his. I hope you will accept this apology and enjoy your time within our kingdom. Elsa slowly nodded as she tried to figure out how she would respond to the king's forward apology. Can I really trust a word he is saying? She thought to herself. Then she met the king's eyes and her gaze didn't waver as she gave her response. The crimes of your son will not be brushed away as if they never happened. A betrayal and an assassination attempt at a coronation that I welcomed your kingdom to cannot be taken so lightly. However, I will formally accept this apology as I think it's the best way for both of our kingdoms to live peacefully. The king began to smile, but it was quickly wiped away as Elsa finished her thought. But make no mistake, this apology in no way makes up for what Hans did, and the trust between our nations is something that will need to be built over time. Elsa stood as straight as she could to show that she wasn't going to waver. The king smiled through clenched teeth and then quickly responded. 
I understand entirely. We could not expect you to forgive what has happened right away. All we wish is to show you our sincerest of apologies and that we are hoping to move forward in the best way that you think is possible. The king looked around him and then back at Elsa. But you must be tired from your journey. I have had my servants set up your bedchambers. You will be resting in the grand guest room. And don't worry, we have also set up a room for your guard right beside yours, so they will be on hand at all times. Elsa took a second before she nodded. Thank you for your hospitality. I would like to get settled if that's all right. After saying her farewells to the king and queen for the afternoon, Elsa and her guard made their way to the large guest chamber, and after having her guard double-check it that it was safe for her, Elsa shut herself into the room and began contemplating her upcoming dinner with the Southern Isles royal family. Calm and collected, she thought to herself as she approached the window that overlooked the castle's stable and courtyard. As long as I maintain my composure and prepare for any questions they might ask me, I'll be... Elsa's train of thought was cut off as she noticed something odd about the stables. For reasons unknown to her, she noticed that there were multiple guards that appeared to be posted right outside of the stables. I wonder what's in there, she thought. When it was time for Elsa to meet the king and his family for dinner, she was taken aback by the size of the feast that had been laid out before her. She was seated beside the Queen of the Southern Isles, who made small talk with Elsa throughout the majority of the meal. On the other side of Elsa sat one of Hans's brothers, whom she hadn't been formally introduced to. However, she did overhear King George call him Lars. As the feast neared its end, the king stood at the head of the table and raised his glass into the air. King George cleared his throat. <clears throat> I would like to once again thank you, Queen Elsa, for sharing this meal with us. Now that our banquet has come to an end, if it would please you, I would like to show you what has become of the man who tried to sully your great kingdom. Hans, Elsa thought to herself. She slowly stood from her seat and proceeded to nod her head. I would like to see him, yes, she responded. The king then escorted Elsa away from the dining room and outside into the courtyard, where she could once again see the stables that were clearly being guarded. She was surprised to see that the stables were where the king intended to take her. As they approached the small hut, the smell of animal manure began to overpower the air, taking away from the otherwise picturesque sunset. Open the fence, ordered the king. His men nodded and opened the small gate to the stable, and inside just enough light was peeking through for Elsa to be able to see the silhouette of a man who appeared to be sleeping on a pile of hay in the corner. The noise from the gate unlatching caused the man to wake up and turn toward Elsa, and as the light hit his face, she realized who she was looking at. Hans, she said quietly as she looked upon a skinny and filth-covered man who was shivering in the corner. The king stepped forward with his head high. If he's going to act like an animal, then he's going to live among them, King George chuckled. <laughs> The boy will learn of his mistakes in time, and until then, he will be treated no better than the pigs he sleeps with. The king continued to trail on about Hans and his treatment, but Elsa began to tune him out, as she couldn't help but feel a sort of pity for Hans at that moment. Why, she wondered, why do I feel sorry for the man who wanted me dead? Elsa couldn't help but think about how she would have treated Hans had they imprisoned him in Arendelle. King George finished his rant and turned to Elsa. Come now, it's quite cold out here. Let's return to the castle and tomorrow we can discuss how we can move forward with everything from here on out. Elsa slowly nodded and turned away from Hans, who had just been sitting there, unable to break his stare from Elsa's direction. Hans couldn't help but clench his jaw to keep himself from screaming in a fit of rage. Damn her, he thought to himself. Who does she think she is, coming here and looking down on me like some dog? I will have my vengeance. That's one thing that I am certain of. Once I'm hidden aboard the bottom deck of the ship, it's only a matter of time until Arendelle is mine.